Welcome everyone to the Clubhouse event, Your Energy, Health, Be Responsible with Empowered Solutions, The Power of Joy. I would like to start by raising the vibration in the space that we're in now by calling for the highest possible vibration and calling forth the truth to come forward into our discussion this evening so that we may see the truth in all that we see, so that we may hear the truth in all that we hear, and so that we may speak the truth in all that we say, shall we be in that frequency of truth and shall we have nothing but the truth. Shall we call for the power of divine feminine to bring balance back into our world, showing us the way through honor, respect, and gratitude? Shall we call for the power of divine feminine to bring balance back into our world, showing us the way through honor, respect, and gratitude? Shall we call for the power of divine feminine to bring balance back into our world, showing us the way through honor, respect, and gratitude? Shall we call for the highest possible vibration? Shall we call for the highest possible vibration? And shall we call for the highest possible vibration? I now ask for everyone to take a sip of water and ask for the water to hydrate our brains and bodies. Water is that medium that holds memory and will assist in the flow of information that we share here together on Clubhouse. Now take a deep breath in, bringing in peace. And release and exhale letting everything else out and take another deep breath in bringing in life into our bodies and exhale re releasing out all that does not serve us and like and veritas everyone i call forth the oneness and truth of the information shared by each and every one of us on this call calling in that frequency of truth and all that is that is truth with honor respect and gratitude and for those who are unfamiliar with the term the greeting and Lakesh is a Mayan greeting for oneness signifying unity where everything and everyone is interconnected it is that idea of community where we can share with one another ideas goals and aspirations and veritas is a Latin word for truth to see the truth in all things so therefore and Lakesh and veritas is declaration of oneness and truth in which we are clearing our spaces space we're in now so that we may be able to bring forth a truthful elevated and enlightened that we use words carefully using words to uplift encourage and enlighten and by doing so as a collective to transform our spaces and places into higher frequencies that will result experiences in our lives and assist in raising the vibration of those who we meet so, and like Hesh and Veritas, everyone with honor, respect, and gratitude. And I would like for everyone to again hold their water in their hands and send it, send and like Hesh to your water with intention in mind. Then take a sip of your water, assisting with the signaling and incorporating the elevated frequency of and like Hesh into the cells of our bodies. And using this technique will assist in the ease and flow of information we share this evening. And Lakesh and Veritas, everyone, with honor, respect, and gratitude. So we've got an intimate group this, this evening. And I want to start by extending my condolences to the families and to, to the families of the recent passing of Dr. Rashid Batar. You know, he was part of the disinformation dozens, dozen, and Buttar was considered really one of the, if you want to call him the OG, it's one of the OGs of the conspiracy theorists, very vocal speaking on the adverse effects on the multiple jabs that had been affecting our children. So his son was a victim of autism, which he attributed to the jabs. And he spoke up against the jabs and COVID-19 and he had a thriving practice in North Carolina where he helped many families who suffered from the effects of the many vaxes and jabs, particularly of C-19. But this of conspiracy theorists, um, you know, the uh, disinformation dozens have actually since expanded with many people now speaking up and out. Mm -hmm. Dr. Buttar was also well known on social media in the mainstream. 
And if you saw him, you would see how passionate he was, you know, with regard to, to expressing his cause. But you also saw how he appeared so, 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 so angry. So in the latter part of his life, he started to express a greater understanding of the benefits of joy and gratitude. But again, I think it did not fully get to get his full understanding until later in his life. And he was only 57 years old in his recent passing. You know, he also spoke on how fear was the culprit of many of our imbalances. And um, he was really a true warrior. But I believe that joy and gratitude is what would have helped to save him and many of us. You know, you've heard that saying, love conquers all. Does anyone have any comments? Okay. Did you hear, you know, my you rendition? We of, could hear, uh, but it was like choppy. It was choppy? Okay, so I, I'll go over, you know, it, I was just speaking was just, on the condolences regarding um, Rashid, Dr. Rashid Batar, you know, and, you know, giving, extending yes, my condolences. Okay. Okay. So, you know, he, he was very passionate in what he, in his audit, in his mission with regards to, you know, helping the children and, and people who suffered from the, uh, the jabs and the vaxes and, and COVID-19. And, you know, be, with his, his passion, he was, he was a warrior. But he, in the latter part of his life, he kind of um, understood and he expressed, when he was so passionate, he was very angry. He was very, 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 very angry. And later on, it seems like he kind of calmed down in his um, expression, what he, what he expressed to others with that understanding of the benefits of joy and gratitude. And I think that he didn't fully get that understanding until later in, in his life. And that may have helped him, you know, and he was only 57 years old, you know, but he did have that understanding and spoke about how fear was a culprit of many of the imbalances that we express, that we are experiencing, excuse me. And um, I believe that the joy and gratitude would have, you know, helped him quite a bit. Any comments? So um, I want to just talk this, this evening about things that can bring us joy. And first, let's just start with the definition of joy. So according to the Oxford definition, joy is a feeling of great pleasure and happiness. And others describe joy as an inner feeling of pleasure where happiness is more of an outside expression. And I find that these emotions actually stem from the heart. And in bioenergetics, the heart is the governance and the control center of our emotions, which signals out to our nervous system and our gut. So you have to ask, what are the things that bring you joy into your life? You know, what thoughts bring you joy? So for me, if I can may share, the one thing that brought me joy in my life was the birth of my children, seeing them grow into adults. You know, and I'm grateful, very grateful for that experience. I also get great satisfaction and joy when I see, you know, someone, the spark in a young person's eye when they are happy and accomplishing certain tasks like in school. And I find that I'm, you know, I'm disgruntled though by our public school education because many times they, um, they had, don't seem to have the support. They don't support our young children, our young people. Many of our formal educational systems have not been supportive and bottom line is usually a reflection of who's teaching who's delivering the information to our children because they themselves tend to be disgruntled, broadcasting that energy out to the children that they're teaching. 
Now, I was brought up under the tough love era, and um, I did get at times the spark. It did give me a spark to continue to go and move forward. But I believe that this practice had a lot to do with um, the fear that our parents were imprinting on us that they held. And that basically transferred onto us as we were growing up. You know, but I truly believe that this form of training needs to be balanced with joyful practices. Does anybody have anything to share? Stories. Yeah, I'm sure everybody, somebody has a story to say what their parents did. <laughs> Diana, go ahead. And look at your on respect and gratitude. Um, what you were saying about joy and being happy, and in school, um, I had just seen a post today about homeschooling. How homeschooling was way before school. You know the school that we went to. And all that schooling is more the experiment than what the homeschooling was because that was done way before, you know, this. And the people that are coming out of these schools, we all, our education is all about learning things like certain things like facts. Can you re repeat that? You know, it was 1492 Columbus sailed the ocean blue. I mean, you know, just and not even correct information. Right. But you know, they didn't really teach us how to live and really think things through. I think that's why a lot of people today are going along with the program because they've been trained that way. You know, we've been trained that way through our schooling. Right. Processing information. I believe mm -hmm. they just didn't allow us to, to think for ourselves and process information. It was just spit out and regurgitate whatever information they gave us. Right. They didn't give us much the opportunity to be creative and question. Mm -hmm. This is the way it is, period. End of story. <laughs> I know that's how I had a lot of my schooling was that way. I know. And if you think about it, I mean, I don't know how many people can remember any joyous oh. events. Usually the joyous events came when you left school. And you started playing with your friends and not necessarily in yeah. class. Yeah, correct. For me, too. <laughs> Serenia, did you have anything to share? Uh, yes, and Lakesh Veritas on respect and gratitude. And Lakesh Veritas on respect and gratitude. Yeah, I, um, my uh, experience with school, I grew up in a family of teachers, so from grandmother and uh, aunts and my mother, aunts and uncles and that. So um, that whole thing was a an extension of home. You know, there was there was um, a lot of, um, I would say, structure. However, you know, I, I, I did have ability to have joy because of who my mother was. But um, I can tell you from a, an experiences of working in the school system, a lot of the joy is suppressed. And even with my own, because I went to, I was in a Catholic school for uh, m much of my elementary uh, life. And so what it is, it is discouraged to laugh and, you know, um, you know, to find joy in things, you know, to have to tell a child who is nothing but joyful, it's normal. For a child mm -hmm. to laugh at things and, and to tell them not to laugh or to stand in the square and, you know, and don't do this and don't do that, especially of those that have a lot of energy and a lot of happiness. And, you know, I think you, you teach them to repress um, their natural instincts to be happy. We, we, mm -hmm. uh, we school them to be joyless. <laughs> so. Yes, we do. We do. I I can can recall and see. I saw the transition in my children from preschool years to the elementary school and how their frequency shifted. 
how the joy started leaving them and they were stressed, unhappy and so forth. And, it, you know, I, I, I can see it looking back. You know, had I known what I knew, know now, I may have done things differently with them with regards to their education. So thank you, Serenia, for that. You know, so, you know, I asked, what, what are the things that bring you joy? You can ask that question. Can you do more of them? What are the practices that you utilize to bring you joy? You know, one thing I like, love doing is watching movies, comedies, educational movies, you know, and one, has anyone seen that animated movie Inside Out? It's a Pixar movie that demonstrates the emotions of a young girl and these like people, well, these characters are behind the scenes that control anger, joy, happiness, um, disgust, you know, there's, there are certain, um, emotions. It was like five of them, you know, and it's, uh, it was such a fun movie. You know, it's a great movie for children and adults. And it's an example of, of, uh, the combination of an education and comedy. Cause there's so much truth behind it. So I do recommend it. It's called Inside Out. I also um, like documentaries, especially when you're sharing the truth. <laughs> it can be serious, but I enjoy them. You know. And, uh, you know, things that also bring me joy is I love to see, like, the fruits of my labor when seeing something that, for instance, I'm planning and it's growing, sprouting, new life coming up. This is something new. You know, it's like an accomplishment. Oh, I did that. I helped. I helped to support this growth. You know, and how about viewing flowers? But flowers are beautiful. And how flowers, especially roses, are highly, highly vibrational. Anyone else want to share things that bring them joy? Yes, I'll share. Um, I love to craft or make things, create. Creating is something that brings me joy. So whenever I, I, I'm creating anything, whether it's food or, or crocheting or knitting or weaving or planting or <laughs> just, you know, making anything, those things bring me joy. I love mm -hmm. to to see, you know, watch the children, to hear them laugh, and to oh, see the yeah. birds, to see the birds, and the, to sit outside and you know feel the wind, and um, just to see beauty, just to be able to feel you know things. Those are joyful, and I like documentaries, and I like learning. So the mm -hmm. more I learn, the more I learn, the happier I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. I agree. I agree. Anyone else? So I'm, I'm going to give you homework. I don't know those of you who know who I am. I like giving homework. I want you to make a, a concerted effort to go out there, find those things that make you joyful, make allow you to feel more joy, and just do more of it. All right? And you can report to me next week. <laughs> those things that bring you joy. All right. So I just want to, this will be a short session. Uh, I want to remind everyone of our weekly whole responsibility sessions, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, 6 a.m., 12.30 p.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard, Eastern Standard Time through Zoom. Wednesdays is only at 6 a.m. It's an extended session of 45 minutes. And then the Of the Sun Dolphins and Whales meditation, first, second, and third Sundays of every month a great start of the week this coming sunday is the next uh, dolphins and whales meditation session and then the next month's uh, monthly self-healing class given by lota rasul is coming up in two weeks sunday may 28th at 8 p.m and you can find this information by going to ofthesun.com for more information and just register and then I want to inform you of the new Abundance and Prosperity group call 
supposed to buy of the sun. It's daily from two at 2.45 and 8.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, only five minutes of your time to help strengthen the energy of abundance and prosperity in your, in your morphic field. And you can register for it to get the link to just call in by going onto the Of The Sun website and look under the Meditation and Mindful tab. And let us not forget the Divine Nation Workshop. Our next meeting is scheduled next month um, in three weeks, Friday, June 9th at 8 p.m., if, if I'm not mistaken. You can correct me, Diane, if, I'm, if I didn't get the date right, but I, I understand it's June 9th. Yes, that's correct. Okay, great, great. And then, oh, thank you. And then our Evolutionary Book Club, Virtual Book Club, hosted by Enlika Studio One, uh, Diane Annis, scheduled in two weeks on Thursday, June 1st. Or is it next week? It's next week. Diane, is it next week, Diane? No, it's two weeks. Next it's in week. two weeks. Yeah, June the June 1st, 1st, right? It's next Thursday. Mm hmm. It's next Thursday? Oh, it's next Thursday. A week from okay. tomorrow. A week from tomorrow. Okay. So it's next Thursday, June 1st at 6.30 p.m. virtual on Zoom. It's a great session where we talk about it. Can you uh, share the book? It's Lily's. I don't want to uh, get the titling incorrect. The Elves of Lily Hill Farm okay. by Penny Kelly. Okay. Yes. Okay, by Penny okay, thank you. Thank you for giving us that information. So, you know, June is like upon us so quickly. But I'd like to thank everyone for joining and participating in this discussion. Remember our homework bringing is to bring more joy into our lives by doing those things that make us feel more joyful. And uh, I, I hope that you'll come back next week and share with us what are the things that you did to express joy, more joy in your life. And remember, knowledge is power and taking action from this knowledge is true power. With honor, respect, and gratitude, and Lakesh and Veritas. And Lakesh Veritas, and respect, and gratitude. And Lakesh and Veritas, with honor, respect, and gratitude. And Lakesh and Veritas on respect and gratitude.